As shown in the figure below, a light ray is incident normal to on one side on one face of a 30, 60, 90 degree block of zircon that is immersed in water. A determine the exit theta 4 of the ray and B a substance is dissolved in the water to increase the index of refraction. At what value of N2 does total internal reflection cease at point P? So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at these angles. So I'm going to call this theta, I'm going to call this theta A and I'm going to call this theta B and I'll call this theta, theta C. Now it doesn't specifically say it, but because it's a right triangle, we know that it's, an, and it does actually say it in the question, that it's a 90 degree angle here. Now in the problem, it gives us theta 1, theta 3, and theta 4. Now I realize there is no theta 2 here. I don't know why, there just isn't. And it may be because most of these questions are taken from the uh, the actual textbook and, and put on web assigned so it may have been that there was an angle right here or something and it wanted you to find that later on in the problem I don't know okay so first of all we want to figure out what theta 1 is and if you look here it's entering the block it's hitting it's hitting the block at a at the normal angle so it's hitting the block at 90 degrees now if you notice the right angle this line is also hitting this side at 90 degrees so these two lines are parallel now by that same logic, if this hits this side, it's going to hit this side at whatever angle that this one is hitting this side. So this angle right here would be 30 degrees. Now if this is the normal angle, then the distance between here would be, we have 90 degrees minus the 30 degrees. So theta 1 should equal 90 minus 30. So theta 1 is equal to 60, 60 degrees. Now due to the rules of reflection, this angle right here has to equal this angle right here. So this is 30, this one must be 30 as well. And what we want to do is we can take this triangle and say that all of the angles here in this triangle should act, add up to 180 degrees. And so if I take this 30 and this 30, add it together, I would get 60. And then I have this, the, the difference between that and there, there's a 90 degree angle right here. So I know that 30 plus 30 plus 90 is going, and if I subtract that from 180, so 180, 180 minus 30 minus 30 minus 90 and the, is going to equal theta 3 that's left over. And by that you can deduce that, that the theta 3 is equal to 30 degrees away from the normal. And so we had to figure out what theta 1 was in order to figure out what theta 3 was. We also need to know theta 1 for part 2 of this question as well, but we need to know what theta 3 is. Theta 3 is going to allow us to figure out what theta 4 is using Snell's law. And so if we call if we call the uh, the block N1, we call this material 1, then using Snell's law we can say that N1 times the sine of theta 3 is equal to N2 times the sine of theta 4. So I'm going to shrink this down so we can keep it on the page. Now we're going to solve for theta 4. We'll do that by doing n1 sine theta 3 divided by n2 and then we'll take the inverse sine, the inverse sine of that will equal theta 4. And so in the problem, it tells me that my material that the, that's making the triangle is zircon. The index of refraction for zircon, N1, is 1.923. So I have the inverse sine of 1.923 times the sine of, of 30 degrees divided by N2, which is water, 1.333. And that should equal roughly 46.16 degrees. Now for part B, it's saying that something is dissolved in the water. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and redraw the triangle. So we have this triangle. A light is hitting it, and then it's bouncing and being reflected down. And so it wants to know at what value of N2 does this light start to come out of the triangle. And it's not asking us what angle. So it, 
it's not giving us a specific angle, so we have to assume that it's saying the minimum angle, which would be, uh, par or would be parallel to the hypotenuse of this triangle. And so if my normal vector is this, then it would be 90 degrees away from the normal vector. So this is the normal vector. It would have to travel 90 degrees away from the normal vector to no longer be reflected inside of the triangle. In other words, it's asking us for the critical angle. So we'll set up the equation for the critical angle using Snell's law. So n1 sine theta1 is equal to n2 sine of 90 degrees. And now we just want to solve for n2. And so, uh, and so what we'll do is we'll just divide by n2, or divide by the sine of 90. So n1 sine theta1 divided by the sine of 90 is equal to n2. Now again, n1 and the sine of theta1 didn't change from part 1, so n1 is 1.923, and the, uh, so times that by the sine of 60 degrees, divide it by the sine of 90 degrees, and you should get that n2, the minimum, uh, the, the minimal uh, refraction index you need to get to is 1.665 and that will stop the total internal reflection. Or, or rather, I could say any, anything greater than that would stop the total internal reflection. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.